All right, folks, welcome back to Ross Garage. Hey, today um, I'm continuing working on the uh, front end, the front beam for the uh, 66. So, like you see over here, I have everything installed, and that's what it's going to look like. I still have to cut the tip of the spindle here because uh, the cap on the Porsche wouldn't work if you have the spindle that long, unless you put the, uh, the original one, well, it won't fit, but the original one's like very tall. So the Porsche one is, it's short. So that's the end result right there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over how to get this set up uh, installed and what I do is I'll uh, first of all right here you see my jack is propping the table uh, so my table is level and the beam is level so now the beam is level I already checked the level the beam and it's uh, squared where it's supposed to be so now when I set this up when I set this up because when you look right here, this one is out and this one is in. So they're not, they're not symmetrical. They're a little cockeyed there. So, and remember we cut it here and all the stuff. So you're going to have some variance, variances, but that's why the, the spindle, spindle here, that's why is, you can see it's also cockeyed as well. So, so we're going to go over the process, how to install this. And uh, yes, there's going to be some parts that you don't use because uh, when we flip the spindles, uh, there's some parts that wouldn't fit because of uh, the way you have to, to get that stuff in there. And, uh, and I, I don't think it's going to, you know, it's going to do anything. So unless you're like uh, in the sand, driving in the sand and stuff like that. So, uh, but it is what it is. And that's the price you pay for uh, modifying your, your systems. So, and I'm willing to pay that price. So, uh, so I'm going to take you to the journey how to set up this, uh, this pins right here and how to get it level uh the adjustment so that way that way you have a a a, a good tracking on the I row and needs to be dead on uh level so that way you track straight so that's what we're going to do we're going to get it level we're going to get it straight and level and uh let's get to it all right folks uh, here it is. First thing first, uh, you got to do a little inventory of what you have and what you need. So what you need is the the bearings, two bearings, uh, the two shafts or the pins, uh, however you want to call it. And then you need eight washer spacers per side. So since uh, this is a new uh, uh, a new setup, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do... Uh, four washers per side and uh and that should give you a, a a number close number where you want it uh to be okay so you can uh work uh work to uh the 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 right number that you find the, that you're looking that is straight up and down all right so uh lightly grease it i use this lithium grease and uh, we're gonna set it, and this is how we, how I do it. I'm not no professional. I'm looking for. Oh, there it is. I'm no no professional on this. Uh, I just do it. I've done it a couple times, and and I think uh, uh, I can help some folks. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, when I say I'm gonna use four washers per side, so. Four washers. One is gonna go on the 
right here on the outside of this pin and one is gonna go on the inside of the pin. So if you see here, this is what I did I, or what I do, how I do it. I think it's the, not the easiest, but the, you know, the best way that I could get it. So what I do is I put the pin, the, the bottom pin first and get it through four washers here, four washers here, and then I flip it up, flip the spindle up, right? And then you have to move the spindle out of the way to move the shaft. And you put the four washers in between. They go right in there. And then you move the shaft and you make sure, make sure you don't go too far out. There you go. And use a brass hammer to, to bang this. Unless you need a little more bang for your buck. I use the bigger one, but most of the time I use the this hammer. So now, so the spindle's in. All right, so now what we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do, this is how I do it. I get a level and ensure that the beam is level and it's just a little off. So we're gonna use our jack here and just give her a little push up. All right, let's see. Oh, that's perfect. That's level right there. So, and we're gonna take the measurement of the, the spindle on the face of the spindle where the uh, the brakes is gonna is gonna rest. So, meaning that from the bottom right here, it needs to go out because the level level uh, bubble is a little off there. So it needs to go out and not much. So what does this mean? It needs to go out to be, to be, to be either 90 degrees, if you put one of those uh, degree wheels, 90 degrees or to be level. So what it means or how we're gonna correct this is to, to pull this out, you have to take washers from this side have to take washers from this side, or I'm sorry, it needs to go in from the top and out from the bottom. So you take washers from this side and add them to this side over here. Same with the bottom. So you take washers from the outside and put them on the inside. So that way what it does is it just pushes it forward or out and in on the tops. And that way you're, you, know, you can look for your desire uh measurement so we're going to do the same way in reverse so we're going to pull the pin out all right i use brass like i said before all right we'll pull pin out and just bang that loose in here because you gotta watch out because all this uh, washers will come off so so now we're gonna we're gonna actually literally flip it all right, so now we said that it needs to come out from the bottom. So that means we need to add and subtract. So, so you what you do is you take the washers right here and you pull the pin out. And the pin pulls with the bearing. So you got to pull the pin and the bearing, you see? So now we're going to take washers from this side, take the bearing out. So from the top, it needs to go, it needs to go in from the top. So that means we're going to take, I'm going to take two. We take two from the top and we're going to add it to the, it needs to go in, right? Well, it's, a, it's opposite. So. We're gonna add four, we're gonna move the four from the inside to the outside. And then we're gonna just leave two on the inside. Okay, so that's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna set it right there for now. We're gonna do the bottom one. The bottom one, we're gonna do the same thing. But instead of taking from the inside, we're gonna take from the outside and add on the 
inside. So, all right, watch out, this is a real fault. So now this is the bottom side. So we take the pin out and then we're gonna add, we're gonna add, we're gonna leave two out here and we're gonna add them to the inside. And you have to put the bearing back on the pin to get it. There you go. So now you just put it back. Bang it. Flip it around and we're going to put the pin back and we're going to put the two washers now so remember it needs to go in from the on the top and remember this is going to be dry now because you know we're going back and forth moving stuff around but when you finish then you have all the desserts you have to get them all greased. All right, so it's back where it's supposed to. So now we're gonna take a level and see where we at. Remember folks, another thing, you got bolts here. This is what gives you the pressure. So when you're getting really close, you have to put these bolts into the, into the, and this will pull everything together. All right, so you use the pressing wrench to move the shaft back and forth. And then locate, there you go, you locate the, the this slot and you get the, the bolt in it. All right, so if you see here, you can go back and forth with it. And you get it tight, right there it's tight. So that's where it's supposed to be. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Man, it's almost there. So it's almost there. So that means we have to do probably a couple more. We're going to take a couple more from one side and, and uh, because we got it's got to kick out just a hair more. That's all it's got to do. Just kick out a little hair. Actually. Actually, I think it's good there. Well, it all depends on the toe in, toe out. So, it needs to be... Man, no, actually, let's see. And the problem, if it's not... If it's not straight this way, it will. If it's not straight this way, it'll... it'll it will throw it off and not right there. This this level right there. There he goes. And then this is straight. Uh, so now so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the uh we're gonna put the uh, rotors. I'm gonna put the rotors in there, and and then we're gonna do. We're gonna take measurements of the uh, tar rods, and we're gonna cut them and and weld them. All, All right, soon. folks. Uh, so now uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the uh, 944 brakes. Uh, and no matter what type of brakes, this brakes you're trying to put on uh, on. Uh, Split bus, expensive. No matter, no matter what type, what brand you go with, uh, they're all expensive. 
So I think uh, I think uh, a lot of people do nine four four breaks. A lot of people do breaks from you know uh, CSP. They do wagon west, and they and everything is expensive. So uh, when you do, I went with the uh, with the uh, Porsche because my double cap came with them and I just I just had them laying around and I had to get it uh, in still it was a little expensive so what you need is the hub this hub right here that's mo the most expensive parts the one with the uh, bolts on the inside five bolts 83 to 87 early 87 so and this one it's got a it's got the year somewhere so this one is a 884 so i think this one over here is is later and this one is actually it's uh same 84. so anyways uh that's one of the things you need you need you need the uh the hub that's the most important thing and uh you can find them at ebay for about I think 250 if you can find them that cheap 250 to through 350 just the hubs then you would need the caliper now this is the caliper right here and then the caliper would be running about 150 dollars but you can get different years this is a, a little later model i think this is an 88 model but it's the same caliper what what changes is the hub and then also of course you need uh rotors and uh if your rotors looks like this one really crappy you can get this rotor from uh rock auto i got them from rock auto and it was uh about 20 bucks a piece 19 dollars a piece 20 bucks something like that so not too expensive and you get a really nice uh slotted rotor that's that's a good thing it's kind of weird where this side is uh is thicker than this side but i thought it was uh the pattern but or uh the wear pipe pattern but it's not it's just it's like that from the factory all right and also you need a kit to mount this onto the spindle uh you can only mount this on the early, uh, later spindles uh 63 or 64 67 you can't you can't do it on the early spindles 63 and back because uh the shaft is uh the spindle itself is thinner it won't work so uh later spindle and you need a kit so the kit will include when you buy them i, I got this one from Dove fab i don't think they're selling them anymore you need the bracket that's the bracket right there and then you also need uh on the inside here you have two spacers that will locate the bearings uh, they locate the bearings out further so it's two little spacers that go on behind the races and that will locate where that bearing will go for the 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 uh rotor and the in the hub to be aligned where it needs to be aligned so uh and that will run you about three hundred dollars so at the cheapest that's three hundred dollars for the uh kit uh the hubs about four uh three hundred dollars for the hubs that's six hundred dollars there and then the calipers uh, 150 dollars so that's about that's about uh 750 on this type of setup so 750 you can go with csp they're running about a thousand dollars uh you can go with uh wagon west uh baby mustangs this the with willwood they're running about 15. the bigger brakes they're running about 18. so just food for thought if you have the parts laying around if you can find them at a junkyard you know uh, you'll be set because you could probably find you know calipers and everything for 200 bucks so uh, ebay is the way to go i think 
Well, that's that's my take on on brakes. And uh, and they mount as easy as the other ones mount. So, uh, if you want to go with uh, Porsche brakes, you know uh, the cheapest you're gonna go, you're gonna have to pay is seven hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> But if you can find the parts on the junk in a junkyard, everything. Uh, uh, the only thing that is not the same from the Porsche, if you get the this uh, the uh, the nut, the locking nut, because on the Volkswagen spindle, one is reverse thread, so one is left-handed thread. So the driver's side is it goes the opposite way. The the right hand side it will be, it'll be good because it have right right handed thread but the left side is the left handed thread so all right all right this is how easy this brake setup will mount and that's the bracket so that's how it looks like four bolts just like you will mount the, the drums there you go. And the kit that I purchased from uh, the Fab, I think it was the Fab. Uh, it came with everything. It, it, it came with everything that you need to mount. So that's it. You tighten, tighten down those four, and uh, you're set. Oh man, I think that D, that D is off. So I gotta grind it. Yep. But anyways, uh, tighten, tighten them, uh, tighten them up. And that's it. And then you put your, you put your, uh, your hub. You put your hub, tighten it down, get it all, and then you put the caliper. Down. Folks, uh, after you do the common things, that is, uh, you know, setting up your, uh, putting the bracket in and uh, caliper and all this stuff. The, the 944 brakes are really simple. Uh, just uh, ensure. Uh, that you put the the front one first because it's got a slat a, a slot in the back, so your rear one they're the same but you see that slot back there. There is a little uh, on the caliper itself. There's a locator that needs to go in there. So that's the one you got to put first, and then you slide in your your rear, and that's as simple as it as it gets. And then. You just, like racing brakes, you just put pins in, and go. There you go. So, there's the pin. It's just gotta bring the bracket up just a hair. Okay. All right, first pin, second pin. There you go. And then, it's got this, uh, this pressure spring here it just goes underneath it and mess that one up goes goes underneath the, uh, the pin there you go so it'll go right there right there and that will keep your your pads in place and then you have this little spring right here it goes right up over that and two little keepers one goes right there and the other one goes on the other side and that's to keep your pins from backing out and that is it very simple on the installation and and now you have Porsche one Porsche 944 brakes on your bus setup. It's, it's just great how, how it looks. It looks really good. So next up, uh, we're gonna do the uh, we're gonna do the uh, the measuring for the uh, tie rods, and we're gonna cut them. All right, guys, go. welcome back. Uh, so here we have. Um, the setup so I have the two spindles and then I have everything that I need to uh, get a roughly measurement what I need for tie rod so this is the OG the original tie rod that came 
with the with the bus so, so when you look at it there it is you see it without the tie rod ends it's touching right there and it's touching right there so now we have to take what we cut we have to also take it off here so at the middle i'm gonna have to cut this right here and then uh, have to compensate for each end each tie rod end that it needs to land halfway in order for us to in order in order for us to have uh uh, uh adjustment uh, here we need to have adjustment back here so that's why that's why we need to to cut it and then ensure that when you put your tie rod ends they're not sunk in all the way or they're out all the way so that way you don't have any adjustment back and forth so it needs to be halfway right there halfway to the uh halfway uh through the uh the thread so that way you have adjustment out and adjustment in all right so i'm gonna cut this bad boy in the middle and then i'm gonna cut whatever i need to cut out of it and after that we're gonna weld it i'm gonna show you how i'm gonna how i'll always weld this you have to make some holes and do some plug welds and you have to put a bar in in between all right so this is what i'm gonna do so this is going just like this okay so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take it over there to my machine i'm gonna cut it in half and then i'm gonna put the two ends one here one here and then i'm gonna take a measurement and i'll do the measurement cut one and then get it uh get it welded so if you see i have it halfway in both sides so that is perfect halfway in that's it because you have you have uh adjustment in and out so let's get to it so uh here it is i got it cut and and this is how it looks like um this is straight mm needs to come out this here and then this right here is fairly centered right there it needs to come this way so right there so so now what i'm gonna do is take this measurement right here and then i'm gonna cut cut it right here and then weld it and i'll show you how to do that so here we are. This is what I'm gonna use. Uh, this is uh, a puller that I had laying around in my scrap. So this is what I'm gonna use for the so for the ends there. And uh, I'm gonna splice that together there. So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna do a couple holes here in this side, a couple holes on the other side for plug weld, and then I'm gonna uh, weld the center. So this is what it looks like. So I did four plug welds or holes around it. One through, one through. So two on each is four. And then this is gonna go all the way in. And we're just gonna weld it. Oh, well, there it is. Oh, let me take this off. Hot off out the oven. Whoa, it's hot. So four plug welds each and then you weld it in the middle middle all the way across and this will go right there like so and that is the proper distance and then you have adjustment to go back and forth so now you just got to repeat the same step on the other side the original uh, it's solid on the other side. Uh, it's just a solid piece. It uh, doesn't have any adjustment. And uh, my double cap doesn't have it that way. But this one does. I guess 
they got to be right there. You see it? So the ends are solid. Crazy. Anyway, so I have to repeat. Oh, let me show you the difference of length in between the two. Here it is. So that's the original. And that's the new one. Right there. A couple inches. The same thing we took from the from the bus. Four inches. We took about two from this one. So Alright folks. Uh I think this concludes the um the uh, link king, kingpin setup um uh, and brakes. So I'll let you go. I have a lot of content. I have to edit and do some uh, work on those videos and send them out to you guys so you can enjoy. Um, and you can try this at home if you want. So, uh, so uh, just, you know, be careful out there when you're working on this and, and have fun. I'll let you go. Don't forget to like and subscribe here in the YouTube channel and also uh, share it and uh, just put the word out. And I appreciate it. All right, see you next time.